Hello everyone, are you ready for another story? Today is a day in the life of Wookie, aka Storytime with Wookie, the only feature <laughs> that I do on my YouTube that has two titles, that's how much I love it. Today's story is of course going to be, and day in the life of me, um, is going to go back all the way to the 19... I guess it can be the 1990s because I would not be alive. Let's say around like 97, sure, that makes sense, 2000s era. Anyway. It's about specifically my time at Blockbuster. Um, Blockbuster is a weird thing, so I recently watched the Netflix movie about Blockbuster, and there was a lot of talk about like, oh, renting movies, but the thing that I always remember about Blockbuster specifically was the ability to actually rent games. Um, so growing up, consoles are... they still are really expensive. I feel like game prices have, in a weird way, actually gone down in price. So I know you're saying like, oh, you know, obviously, when you count in microtransaction stuff, it's often really, it can get way higher and crazier numbers than that. But, back in my day, there used to be, like, super fluctuating prices, and it was because of how much, car like, cartridge it used. So sometimes games would be, like, $40, and then sometimes it's, like, some of the most high-end Super Nintendo games, I think, came out to be around $90. And I think for some Nintendo 64 games, I saw them as high as 150 <laughs> 150 and you just there's no feasible way for you to be able to afford that with the number of good games that came out at least we couldn't at the time um so renting was a perfectly fine option so we always went to blockbuster to rent our games and so i wanted to specifically talk about three games that i remember renting from blockbuster that i really liked um so let's go back so starting in time i think the first one i think we need to talk about this one specifically because it's the one that's the music is playing from i did end up renting conquer's bad fur day it was a rare game if you don't know who rare is back in the day rare <laughs> they currently the last game they made was sea of thieves and they're currently still updating it and they're currently owned by xbox but back in the day they were their own independent studio from i think it was england um and they used to be a second party developer for Nintendo stuff. So they used to make a bunch of really good, they're the people who made Donkey Kong Country. They made um, GoldenEye, they made Conker's Bad Fur Day, they made Banjo-Tooie, they made Banjo-Kazooie. If you were a kid in that specific era, you knew who Rare was because every time you booted up Donkey Kong Country 2, uh, Diddy's Conquest, um, you would see the giant Rareware logo and then Nintendo. So that logo in your mind was always like, oh, that just means good ass game because that also was in front of Killer Instinct, and Killer Instinct and um, Donkey Kong Country 2 were enough for me to go like, okay, everything Rare makes is fucking amazing, and I will follow them to the ends of the earth. <laughs> so when it came to the Nintendo 64, they made, of course, Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, but they also made Conker's Bad Fur Day, and Conker's Bad Fur Day is their most controversial game, because it was rated M when it wasn't supposed to be in the originally, and it, they got a lot of flack for it because it had a little cartoon squirrel uh, on the cover, but he was drinking, um, and <laughs> parents got angry at Rare saying like, okay, that's suggestive to kids, they're gonna wanna buy, they're gonna wanna play this game because there's a cute squirrel on it, and they're like, surely no one, any parent would stop someone because it's rated M for Mature. Cut to Little Wokey up in the blockbuster, my dad is looking for a movie, he's probably looking at Terminator 2 or something at that point, he wants to watch something. Um... So then it goes to me, and I'm looking at specifically what game I want to want to want to play. Uh, there's a bunch of different choices at that time. Um, I see Conker's Bad Fur Day because of the the art, the Barx art for Conker's Bad Fur Day. I think is extremely good because it is in it is kind of all almost all black except for the N64 only on N64 logo. Um, <laughs> It's really funny if you look at it, because it says literally on it, Advisory, this game is not for anyone under the age of 17. It could not tell you harder, do not play this if you are under the age of 17. But as a kid, all I saw was the Rareware logo, and I saw a squirrel, which would I, drinking what I thought at the time was just Coca-Cola. It turns out it is beer. Um, so I picked up that game, and I went to my dad and said, like, this is the game I want to play. And my dad, I love my father, he's the greatest man that I know. He looked at the game and said, okay. And <laughs> without even a second thought, <laughs> <laughs> um, so he rented me Conker's Bad for a day, and then I started playing it, and that's, I think, at that age, I mean, at that age, I was already kind of a sweary kid, but I didn't really understand, like, like, I would say, like, fuck shit, but it was always, like, in, like, really lame-ass ways, like, 
mother, motherfucking bitch shit, you know, dick cock, and it'd be like, there's no sentence structure to the swears. Which is not the right way to say a swear. If you just say every swear imaginable in the world in one sentence, it's just not that good. It's, it doesn't flow well. I think I learned how to swear from Conker's Bad Friday because I started playing that game and I was like, oh my god. This is an insanely sweary game. And not sweary the developer, I mean sweary is in like, they just cursed up a damn storm. Um, and I actually do remember playing this in front of my mom one time and we were at the level where the guy says, get this fat bitch off me. Uh, it's really early on and I remember her looking at it and going like, huh, that wasn't nice of him. And then just moving on, I'm so thankful that she did not fucking watch me play it when during the weird gear blowjob scene or any of the other times during it there's like so many bad points in the game she could have seen it there's parts where like there's giant balls hanging down but she, the worst she saw was that she's like okay that's weird but you know he's older now i guess he can play it um i should not have been playing conquer but it doesn't matter because <laughs> conquer is also very violent at the same time um, I'm a perfectly fine kid though, so I ended up being perfectly fine. And I really do love Conquer, and it's um, playing it and renting it on um, Blockbuster. Eventually I did have to return it, I never beat it on that copy specifically, but then years later in middle school, um, which shouldn't be that many, many years later. The timelines are all funky, but I'm pretty sure it was in middle school. You were near the end of middle school, or... Yeah, it had to be middle school, because at this point... Um, by the point I'm saying this right here, that the GameCube PS2 was out because I was having a lot of arguments over Beautiful Joe, um, with friends because they were saying like, Beautiful Joe looks like cartoon, it doesn't have the great graphics, and I was like, you're full of shit. You don't know anything. Um, I defended Beautiful Joe and history proves that I was right because most PS2 games that were realistic at the time have aged like fucking garbage and Beautiful Joe still looks amazing. Um... But I had a friend in middle school, and she specifically, we would talk about Conquer, and she'd be like, oh yeah, there was going to be a sequel. Like, th it was crazy how much we talked about Conquer. Um, a whole bunch. She was also kind of weird, because I think she was also making up, like, the sequel to Conquer, but I think at the time there was a lot of internet stuff. So what actually, <laughs> I don't think she was weird, I think she just read a lot of weird message board stuff. And fanfiction, and she was like, no, I'm pretty sure this is what was going to be Conker's Bad for Day 2. Like, Barry, there was supposed to be a planned Conker's Bad for Day 2 featuring Barry, but it never happened. But she was probably fixing the two, whatever. The reason I say fanfiction is because she also, like, told me about a whole bunch of good manga and anime and stuff. So she was a good friend. Um, she ended up letting me borrow her, co uh, her, bar her <laughs> borrow her copy of Conker's Bed for a Day to beat it, and then I never returned it, and I still have that copy to this day. I feel kind of bad about holding on to it, but at least I remember. Unfortunately, I, I could only really remember her face. She had one of those faces that looked like she was very, like, sleepy all the time. Yeah, it's hard to explain. Um, so yeah, Conker's Bed for a Day, that was one of them. Uh, the other one I remember renting a whole bunch um, is Mario Party, and the reason I'm remembering Mario Party, this one's much shorter than the rest, is because, specifically with me with Mario Party, um, I think when the original first Mario Party came out, my brother had not been born yet. Let me double check on that. Mario Party release date. Because I want to say it's, it had to be... Yeah, it was 1998, so my brother was not even formed yet. Um, so the only person I really had to play with Mario Party at the time was my little sister. But she's two years younger than me, and it's 1998. I would have to be around seven years old, and she would be five, so... It, she was actually extremely good at Mario Party. Don't, don't, even though she's only two years younger than me, she was extremely good at Mario Party. She'd never beat me take that but I think she actually did beat me a couple times um but I used to rent Mario Party a whole bunch to the point where I think eventually my parents just bought me Mario Party 1 and 2 because they were like okay you need to stop stop with this game already um and I used to play a whole bunch of single player stuff um oh you know what I just remembered the other one this one was actually okay so the other game that's one of them Mario Party um, the thing I remember most is just basically 
playing it a whole bunch and having a good time. But the other one, the when I was like, oh yeah, I rented it a whole bunch. Here's a case of a game where specifically I rented it, never rented it again, but I wanted to beat it in one go because I thought I could. Um, and that's Rayman 2. Now, if you were if you were watching my live streams when I started doing it early, my first game was Rayman 2 for the N64. And the reason was is that as a kid, I actually spent an entire day trying to beat Rayman 2 because back in the day, Rayman 2 you needed an expansion pass to save. Um, there were specific games on the N64 that you needed this expansion pass to save, and I didn't have it. So those specific games I had to beat in one go. So Toy Story 2 I can beat in one go to this day. Um, I can beat all of Toy Story 2 in a single day. Um, and Rayman 2, when we rented it, it ended up being one of those games, so I was like, oh shit. Well, I want to beat all of Rayman 2 in one day, and I tried, and I failed horribly. It was like the most angry I'd ever been at a video game, and I was so angry I never rented it again. And then when I ended up um, streaming, I ended up streaming the game, and uh, when I got to the point where I was frustrated as a kid, I was like, I wasn't even close to being beating the game. I was like not even at the halfway point. It was actually kind of crazy. Um, so that's a fun story right there. Um, if you want, if, I, I think most of the Rayman 2 stuff is archived. If not, I have a copies of all the Rayman 2 stuff if I have not uploaded it all. At some point, I should really just dump all this stuff somewhere. Anyway, continuing on. The final game that I wanted to mention specifically in the case of renting over and over and over again was the original Paper Mario that was on the N64. Now, I, I'm mostly remembering a bunch of N64 games, but you have to remember when Mario Party 1 released. <laughs> it was 1998, and I was 7. I remember renting a bunch of SNES games, but I cannot tell you offhand which ones they are. They, oh, you know what? It was Mortal Kombat. I read to Mortal Kombat a whole bunch in... Um, in those days, but there was a, usually a lot of platformers, but my mind is so hazy from back then of like trying to remember specific dates that I can only just remember like bits and pieces. I do remember the Mortal Kombat because I remember getting in trouble for renting Mortal Kombat. I think Mortal Kombat is the only game that my mom ever got angry at my dad for renting for me. She was just like, if you didn't know, back in the day Mortal Kombat had a whole like Senate hearing over it. So when she found out that my dad had rented me Mortal Kombat, and the reason my dad rented me Mortal Kombat is because he wanted to play Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I remember specifically like us playing it a whole bunch. And she's just like I'm so angry at him, and he, we had to re immediately return it back. And um, thankfully, she got over it eventually because I do remember also renting Mortal Kombat too. But besides the point, uh, Paper Mario. Uh, growing up as a kid, I played a bunch of JRPGs. Um, most of them were Pokemon. Uh, funny story about Pokemon Gold. I actually do remember buying Pokemon Gold from Kitty World at the time. Because Kitty World at the time, for some reason, sold Japanese stuff in general. So it was the one-stop place if you wanted to buy Hello Kitty merch. And then also buy Pokemon Japanese Pokemon cards. Or Digimon devices, which I totally did. Um, when we actually went to go buy Pokemon Gold, which was at the date of release, um, the craziest thing happened, because I remember I was super happy holding the game, and as we were getting into the car, this woman said, like, she was saying to my mom, like, can you give me a ride? My baby's sick. And then my mom was, like, very, like, scared out of her mind. I didn't realize at the time, because I was like, I think I was gonna say to her, like, oh yeah, sure, just before I could say anything, but my mom was, like, immediately, like, no, get in the car. And when I was like, um, I was sitting in the seat and I was like looking at her I was like, I think I was gonna ask like, why can't we help? And then right as soon as I looked to her, I saw my mom's arm. I think I heard my mom yell like, close the door. Like she yelled, he had like said my real name, yelled, close the door. Um, and I quickly went to the side, closed the door locked it on instinct and i saw the woman was like literally banging on her door saying like i need a ride and my mom drove out of there and i was like i well, the first thing i was like god that woman really needed a ride like we should have helped her and my mom was specifically going like mm, she didn't need she was she was very suspicious she was like there was no baby anywhere on her it was it was not the greatest part of town that we were at this kitty world so that was harrowing, 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 scary. Um, 
But anyway, yes, yeah, so that's how I got Pokemon Gold, and Pokemon Gold was awesome. So that was my, <laughs> my main JRPG game at the time. I played a good number of JRPGs on the SNES, but I never was able to finish them, because uh, they were mostly rented from Blockbuster. But then, um, I rented Paper Mario, and I was like, okay, let's sit down, rent this Paper Mario, play it for the week or so. Um, and I was like, oh my god. This is amazing. But the problem is, is that I couldn't beat Paper Mario in one week because Paper Mario is a lot. And let me see, what year was Paper Mario released? It had to be around, Paper Mario I think was released at the tail end of 2000s because Paper Mario was released right before GameCube was announced. Release date. It had to be around 2000 something. It was literally August 2000, okay. Um, so at this point, I'm able to read, so I'm, <laughs> but I'm still not, no, actually, I was actually an extremely good reader, so that was no problem with me. I was still kind of a dumb kid, though. Except for video games, I actually think I was a fairly decent one. But anyway, point is, could not be Paper Mario in a week, because there's a lot of hard fights in that, specifically for a kid like me. Um, and not understanding cer certain systems and stuff like that. Um, so a week passes by, and I was like, oh, crap. I just kind of, so it came time to rent another game, and I was just like, okay, Paper Mario again. And I kept renting Paper Mario over and over and over again. And I think finally on the last go-through of Paper Mario, this is the one where I finally beat it. Um, um, I beat Paper Mario. I was like, oh yeah. And then I think I ended up getting Paper Mario again. And as we were going, my dad was getting extremely angry because at this point he was just fed up with Blockbuster's late fees. I don't know if it was because of me, because of my constant um, not wanting to return Paper Mario, or because he forgot to return a, vi a video in time. But he had to pay a big late fee. And I think he said that was the last late fee that we're going to pay. You're going to, whatever time you have left on this game, you're going to play it, and then we're going to return it, and then we're never returning to Blockbuster again. And you have to understand, at that specific time, the idea of not going to Blockbuster was the account, was basically my father saying, who loved movies, we are never going to see another movie again. Because VHSs were so expensive, everything was so fucking expensive at the time. Um, games were expensive, and so I was like, yeah, right, we're going to rent there from it again, so don't, don't, don't try and act like, you, you just can't stop going to Blockbuster. Cut two. I think it's now I'm in college. We have never gone back to Blockbuster. Not once. I thought my dad was gonna relent at some point. Never did. He never did. And finally the local Blockbuster where he specifically got the late fee was closing down because at this point Blockbuster had been screwed over by their late fees. Competition from Netflix was fierce. And so I said to my dad, Dad. This blockbuster is literally going down. He's like, good. I want it to go down. But I was like, listen, we haven't gone there in years. We need to go back there, have one last, buy something to remember. Specifically, that this was our blockbuster, man. We used to love going there, and at this point, you can just say it like, you won over blockbuster, huh? Like, they didn't get your, they didn't get your money, and now they're closed. It's like, okay, get in the car. We all went. And I think I ended up buying Terminator 2 from that blockbuster. But at that point, it was not the same blockbuster that I had remembered. It had become a sad, hollow thing of what it used to be. <sighs> but yeah, there you go. There was my blockbuster story. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I think that's the end of today's video, everyone. Thank you very much for listening to me ramble on about, well, about blockbuster for a bit. Um, if you've got any specific stories about Blockbuster, I'd like to hear it. I think a good majority of you probably never went to Blockbuster, but I actually don't know. So, who knows? So, that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. And until next adventure, I'll see you guys whenever. Bye-bye.